President Kennedy has been shot by a would-be assassin in Dallas, Texas. The JFK assassination is the conspiracy theory to end all conspiracy theories. Even for those well-versed in the events of the assassination, there remains many missing pieces, perhaps some of which can be filled in by taking a look at some of the more obscure characters, those with substantial eye-opening stories to tell. Enter Richard Case Nigel. Two months prior to the assassination, Nigel, a decorated veteran of the Korean War and U.S. intelligence operative for the CIA, had discovered that there was a conspiracy to assassinate JFK and that Lee Harvey Oswald was to be the patsy. Nigel, then convinced it was in his own best interest to do so, walked into a Texas bank, demanded a mere hundred dollars, then fired two rounds into the ceiling before walking outside and waiting for the police to arrive. The arresting officers don't know what to make of Nagel. He isn't saying much to them, and they don't know who he is or that what he knows makes him fear for his own life. In the summer of 1962, in the lead-up to the Cuban Missile Crisis, Richard Nigel was tasked with feeding false information to the Soviets. They, in turn, are convinced Nigel had double-crossed the Americans and entrust him not only with the duty of keeping an eye on a group of anti-Castro Cubans they believed were plotting to kill the American president, but also was watching another individual, one that, at this time, was not involved or suspected to be involved with any plot against Kennedy. That individual was a young American who had defected, supposedly, to the Soviet Union, a man by the name of Lee Harvey Oswald. Nigel claims that, in his investigation of the plot against the president, he discovered the identities of those involved in the conspiracy, and that they, not knowing his true motives, proposed that he participate in the act. At this time, the Russians order Nigel to foil the conspiracy by any means necessary, even if it means killing the patsy Oswald. Nigel instead, in an attempt to protect himself both from those involved in the conspiracy and from the Russians for not following orders, decides to purposely get himself arrested for robbing a bank in El Paso, Texas, but not before sending a warning to both J. Edgar Hoover as well as his own superiors at the CIA. While locked up, Nigel tells visiting CIA officials that he wanted to be in custody when the assassination took place in Dallas. This is September 20th, 1963, just two months before the assassination actually happens. Later, after JFK is assassinated and Nigel is put on trial for bank robbery, a peculiar thing happens. Before the jury is selected, a new judge is brought in, bam, overnight. The new judge, Homer Thornberry, a very close confidant and friend of new president, Lyndon Johnson. Thornberry, himself in Texas on the day that JFK was murdered, immediately puts a lid on anything regarding the assassination that Nigel tries to bring up in the trial to put on public record. Ultimately, Thornberry sentences Nigel to 10 years in prison, even though it was obvious that he had not really attempted to rob the bank. Decades later, the Assassination Records Review Board sends Nigel a subpoena to get his story officially recorded. However, he is found dead literally a day after the letter arrives. Despite having no history of cardiac issues, he passed away from a heart attack. The story doesn't end quite there, though. After Nigel's passing, his San Diego apartment is sealed off, and soon after, members of the Assassination's Record Review Board, along with Nigel's son, are allowed in. Inside, they find evidence of a series of footlockers in Tucson, Arizona, one of them being the Purple Trunk, the one that contained all the information on the assassination that they were looking for. Nigel's son leaves for Tucson, and while he's gone, his apartment is broken into and ransacked. Then, when he arrives in Arizona, he finds all the trunks there, there. and accounted for, all except one, the Purple Trunk. Taken on its own, the obscure, little-known story of Richard Case Nigel is more than a little troubling. It points strongly to the notion that there exists, and perhaps still does exist, a strong contingency of forces, a group of individuals within our own government that has a vested interest in keeping secret vital information to the assassination of a modern president. Whether this interest is one of self-preservation in the form of covering up incompetency of an agency, or that of saving their own necks, We'll never know, because there are those out there that yet think you don't deserve to know.